In this video, we'll look at some well-known combinations of logic gates and see how these can be combined to produce a circuit capable of adding multi-bit binary numbers together. Although we'll be reinventing the wheel, so to speak, we will see how truth tables and Carnot maps can play a role in circuit design. Let's begin by looking at some well-known logic gate combinations. Suppose we wanted to build a circuit to produce the output shown in this truth table. When we transfer this information onto a Carnot map, we can see two groups of ones here. The vertical group corresponds to not A, and the horizontal group to not B. So we have the Boolean expression not A or not B. From this, we can see we need a circuit which inverts each of the inputs A and B before passing them through an OR gate. When we apply De Morgan's theorem, we come up with a simpler expression, and therefore a simpler equivalent circuit that does the same job. This time, we're simply inverting the output of an AND gate. You may well have seen this straight away by inspecting the truth table. Notice that the output column of the truth table is the inverse of an AND gate. This particular gate combination is so useful, it has its own name and its own symbol. It's called a NAND gate. Suppose we wanted to build a circuit to produce the output shown in this truth table. When we transfer this information onto a K-map, we can see only one group of ones here. This group corresponds to not A and not B. So here's our Boolean expression. From this, we can see we need a circuit which inverts the two inputs before passing them through an AND gate. When we apply De Morgan's theorem, we come up with a circuit which simply inverts the output of an OR gate. Again, you might have noticed this from the output column of the truth table. It's just the inverse of an OR gate. This particular gate combination is also very useful and therefore has its own name and its own symbol. It's called a NOR gate. Look at this truth table and you may spot that this is the same as a regular OR gate, except that when both inputs are 1, the output is 0. The corresponding K map has two separate groups. The group on the top right corresponds to A and not B, and the group on the bottom left corresponds to not A and B. So this is the Boolean expression we derive. And this is the circuit that does the job. This particular combination of gates is known as an exclusive OR gate, that is XOR for short. The XOR function also has its own symbol for Boolean algebra, a circle with a cross in it. But this is rarely used in Boolean algebra because the rules of simplification don't apply to it. Let's suppose we want to design a circuit to perform this calculation. You should already know how to do this binary addition on paper, but let's remind ourselves of the process. Starting from the right, we add 1 plus 1. This gives us 2, of course, which in binary is 1, 0. So we put down the 0 and we carry the 1. Now we add 1 plus 0 plus the one we carried from the previous operation, giving us 2 again. So we put down the 0 and carry the 1. Now we add 1 plus 1, plus the one we carried from the previous operation, this time giving us 3, which in binary is 1, 1. So we put down the 1 and we carry the 1. And again, 1 plus 1, plus the one we carried is 3, that's 1, 1, so we put down the 1 and carry the 1. This time, 0 plus 1 plus the 1 we carried gives us 2. Put down the 0, carry the 1. 0 plus 0 plus the 1 we carried gives us 1. Put down the 1, carry the 0. That's right, there's nothing to carry, but notionally, we've carried a 0. 0 plus 0 plus the 0 we carried gives us 0. Put down 0, carry a 0. Same again, and the calculation is complete. 
Apart from the fact that we're working in binary, this is pretty much what you learn to do in primary school. We will now attempt to design a circuit that will do the same job. Consider what happened each time we added a pair of bits together. Let's call them A and B. We produced a sum, let's call it S, and a carry bit, which we'll call C out. This truth table describes all the possible outcomes for different combinations of A and B. You can see that the truth table has two output columns, S and C out. This is the K map, just for output S. We have two groups of ones. The group on the left can be expressed as not A and B, and the group on the right as A and not B. So we've arrived at an expression that you may recognise as that of an XOR gate. In fact, you may have already spotted this from column S of the truth table. Here's a K map for the C out column of the truth table. There's only one group here with a single one in it, and this group is expressed as A and B. This leads us to a circuit that combines an XOR gate with an AND gate. Notice how the logic gates share the same pair of inputs. This particular circuit is known as a half adder. It's the fundamental building block of a circuit that can perform the whole addition calculation. Here's a simplified representation of the half adder circuit. But we don't have the whole picture yet. Every time we add a pair of bits together, we may also need to add in a carry bit that was generated when the previous pair of bits were added together. Furthermore, we might generate a new carry bit. To get closer to performing the whole binary addition operation, we really need a circuit that can handle three inputs. Such a circuit would produce this truth table. In this truth table, you can see that we have an input column for the incoming carry bit an output column for the sum, and an output column for the carry bit that might be generated. A circuit that's described by this truth table can be created by combining two half adders and an OR gate, like this. So how does it work? Suppose you wanted to add three denary numbers together in your head, let's say 2 plus 3 plus 4. You would probably add the first two together, 2 plus 3, to produce a partial result of 5. Then you'd add the third number, 4, to give the result 9. The same principle is being used here. To add together A, B and the carry bit C, first we use a half adder to add together A and B, which produces a partial result P. Then we use another half adder to add this partial result to the carry in, giving us the sum S. Now, either of the two half adders here could generate a new carry bit. If either or both of these half adders produce a carry out, it needs to be fed into the next part of the addition operation. So we take the values of C out from the two half adders and pass them through an OR gate. This circuit is known as a full adder, and we can simplify this diagram too. Finally, we can daisy chain our full adders together like this, the carry out of one supplying the carry in of the next. This circuit is extremely useful. It allows us to add together two multi-bit binary numbers. It's known as a ripple carry adder, and here it is performing our calculation. Adder circuits refined and optimized from this basic design are at the heart of the arithmetic and logic units inside the processors of the digital computers that we know today.